Have you ever experienced a ringing sound in your ears when there's no external noise? If yes, then you've encountered what is medically known as tinnitus. While it's often characterized as a symptom rather than a disease, its impact on quality of life can be significant. This perceived sound can vary greatly among individuals and may be heard as ringing, buzzing, hissing, whistling, swooshing, or clicking. Tinnitus can be continuous or intermittent, and can vary in loudness. It is often more noticeable in quiet environments and is not usually a sign of a serious condition, but it can be bothersome. The neurophysiological mechanism of tinnitus, while not completely understood, is thought to involve several key processes within the auditory and nervous systems. Here's an overview of the current understanding. Tinnitus often begins with some form of damage to the auditory system, such as noise-induced hearing loss, age-related hearing loss, or injury to the ear. This damage typically leads to altered neural activity in the auditory pathway. Following damage to the auditory system, the brain undergoes a process known as neuroplasticity, where it adapts and reorganizes itself. This reorganization can lead to abnormal neural activity in the auditory cortex, the part of the brain responsible for processing sound. The loss of normal auditory input can cause neurons in the auditory pathway to become hyperactive, leading to increased spontaneous firing rates. This increased activity can be perceived as the sounds of tinnitus. Studies using functional MRI and other neuroimaging techniques have shown changes in the brain activity of individuals with tinnitus. These changes are not limited to the auditory cortex but also involve other areas of the brain related to attention, emotion, and memory which might explain why tinnitus can be more bothersome under stress or in quiet environments. There is evidence to suggest that the somatosensory system, related to sensations from skin, muscles, and joints, can influence tinnitus, especially in cases where tinnitus can be modulated by movements or pressure on the face, head, and neck. Changes in the levels of neurotransmitters, the chemicals that enable neurotransmission, are also believed to play a role in tinnitus. This includes changes in glutamate and GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid levels, which are crucial in auditory processing. Understanding the neurophysiological mechanisms of tinnitus is an ongoing area of research. This complexity explains why tinnitus can manifest differently in individuals, and why its treatment and management can be challenging. Now, what you might not know is that tinnitus can sometimes be a symptom of some underlying health issues. Here are some conditions that can be associated with tinnitus. First up is Meniere's disease an inner ear disorder characterized by episodes of vertigo, fluctuating hearing loss, and tinnitus. This disease is believed to be related to abnormal fluid dynamics in the inner ear, specifically an abnormal accumulation of fluid, leading to increased pressure and volume within the inner ear. Next is acoustic neuroma, a non-cancerous and usually slow-growing tumor that develops on the nerve connecting the inner ear to the brain. As it grows, it can press against the nerve, causing tinnitus, hearing loss, and balance issues. Autosclerosis is another condition, a middle ear disorder where abnormal bone growth can cause hearing loss and tinnitus. Age-related hearing loss is also linked to tinnitus. As we age, our hearing tends to deteriorate, often leading to tinnitus in older adults. Exposure to loud noise over a long period can damage the tiny sensory hair cells in the ear that transmit sound to the brain, leading to tinnitus. Another potential cause is earwax blockage, Excessive earwax can cause hearing loss or irritation of the eardrum, leading to tinnitus. Temporomandibular joint disorders, or TMJ disorders, can cause tinnitus also. These disorders affect the joint that connects the jaw to the skull and can result from issues like jaw injury, arthritis, or clenching and grinding teeth. TMJ disorders can cause tinnitus through a complex interplay of anatomical, functional, and neurological factors. Here's an explanation of how TMJ disorders might lead to the development of tinnitus, proximity to the ear, muscular tension and strain, nerve interference. We are talking specifically about the trigeminal nerve, which is primarily responsible for motor functions and sensation in the face, including the jaw. This nerve is closely linked with the nerves that influence hearing. Dysfunction in the TMJ can affect the trigeminal nerve and indirectly impact auditory pathways 
potentially leading to tinnitus, altered pressure and eustachian tube dysfunction, bone-conducted sound vibrations, psychological stress, as TMJ disorders are often associated with increased stress and anxiety, which can exacerbate or contribute to the perception of tinnitus. Other conditions potentially associated with tinnitus are hypertension, high blood pressure. Tinnitus can be a symptom of high blood pressure. The increased pressure can lead to turbulent blood flow, which might be heard as tinnitus. Atherosclerosis. This condition is characterized by the hardening and narrowing of arteries due to plaque buildup. In certain cases, this can lead to a form of tinnitus caused by turbulent blood flow through affected arteries. Anemia. Particularly iron deficiency anemia can sometimes cause tinnitus. The reduced number of red blood cells and lowered hemoglobin levels can lead to increased blood flow in smaller blood vessels near the ears, potentially causing tinnitus. Diabetes. This chronic condition, characterized by high blood sugar levels, can affect blood vessels and nerves throughout the body, including those in the ear. This can potentially contribute to the development of tinnitus. Thyroid disorders. Both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism can lead to tinnitus. These conditions can affect the functioning of the auditory system, leading to symptoms like hearing changes and tinnitus. Fibromyalgia. A disorder characterized by widespread musculoskeletal pain, it's also associated with fatigue, sleep, memory, and mood issues. Tinnitus can be one of the less commonly known symptoms associated with fibromyalgia. Remember, these conditions have a complex relationship with tinnitus, and tinnitus is just one of many potential symptoms. If you're experiencing persistent tinnitus, it's essential to see a healthcare provider for a proper diagnosis and tailored treatment plan. Tinnitus is a fascinating and complex condition. Here are some intriguing facts about tinnitus. While commonly described as a ringing sound, tinnitus can manifest as hissing, whistling, buzzing, or even clicking noises. The sound perceived can vary greatly from person to person. Most tinnitus cases are subjective, meaning only the person experiencing it can hear the noise. However, a rare form, objective tinnitus, can be heard by a doctor during an examination. This type is usually caused by vascular or muscular issues. About 10 to 15% of the global population experiences some form of tinnitus. In the United States alone, over 50 million Americans experience tinnitus to some degree, with about 20 million having chronic tinnitus and 2 million experiencing extreme and debilitating cases, according to the American Tinnitus Association. Research indicates that tinnitus is not just an ear issue, but also involves the brain's interpretation of nerve signals. Changes in the brain's neural circuits due to hearing loss may contribute to tinnitus. Tinnitus is often linked with emotional stress and anxiety. In some cases, it can lead to psychological distress, affecting daily activities and quality of life. This connection is a focus area for developing treatment strategies. Potential triggers. Exposure to loud noises is a common trigger for tinnitus. However, it can also be triggered by medications, like certain antibiotics or high doses of aspirin, earwax blockage, ear bone changes, or even age-related hearing loss. Many individuals with tinnitus report difficulty sleeping. The lack of external sound at night can make the internal sounds of tinnitus more noticeable, disrupting sleep patterns. Currently, there's no single cure for tinnitus. Treatments vary and can include sound therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, medication adjustments, and coping strategies. Recent advances in technology, like specialized hearing aids and sound therapy devices, offer new hope in managing tinnitus symptoms more effectively. Tinnitus is a multifaceted condition with physiological, neurological, and psychological components, making it a subject of ongoing research and interest in the medical community. Generally, tinnitus is not indicative of a serious health issue, but there are certain circumstances where it's important to consult a doctor to exclude the possibility of a more severe condition. If tinnitus appears suddenly without any apparent cause, especially if it's only in one ear, you should seek medical attention promptly. If tinnitus is accompanied by hearing loss, dizziness, or balance problems, these could be signs of more serious conditions that need medical evaluation. If tinnitus significantly affects your ability to concentrate, sleep, or perform daily activities, or if it causes psychological distress like anxiety or depression, seeing a doctor is essential. If tinnitus comes with pain, drainage from the ear, dizziness, or a feeling of fullness or pressure in the ear, it's important to consult a healthcare professional. If your tinnitus developed after an injury to the head or neck, you should seek medical evaluation to rule out any serious underlying issues. 
If the tinnitus has a pulsating character, like a heartbeat, this could indicate a vascular condition and immediate medical assessment is advised. To sum up tinnitus, the perception of noise or ringing in the ears is often a symptom rather than a disease. If you're experiencing tinnitus, that persistent ringing, buzzing, or other noises in your ears not caused by external sounds, it's important to consider consulting with an ENT doctor who can conduct a comprehensive evaluation, which may include hearing tests and other diagnostic procedures to determine the underlying cause of your tinnitus. Based on the diagnosis, they can provide you with appropriate treatment options or management strategies. Remember, while tinnitus is often not a sign of a serious condition, seeking professional medical advice is a prudent step toward understanding and managing your symptoms effectively. I hope this video helped you understand better this fascinating condition. Stay tuned for our next episodes where we'll discuss various modern therapeutic options. Please like and subscribe to my channel for future medical updates.